Today's episode is brought to you by Artlist. Apple has just announced a brand new M3 MacBook Pro, which is perfect for video editing. But what if I told you that I just got myself the much cheaper M2 MacBook Air instead? I want to make the controversial statement that the cheaper machine is actually a video editing powerhouse which is hiding in plain sight. Stay tuned because I'm about to challenge some assumptions and I'll tell you why this could be the much, much smarter choice. What is up guys? In today's video I want to answer the question if you should skip on the M3 MacBook Pro and get the MacBook Air 15 inch M2 instead. You might be surprised about the suitability for video editing and I was too. So stick around because I'm about to explain why this machine is quite underrated and a very decent alternative that deserves your attention. Now, before we go ahead, just a little backstory here. My previous MacBook Pro, which I've been using for three years now, recently called it quit. The fan on this one towards the end was so loud, I seriously thought NASA might call me up and to help them propel like a satellite into space or something. And as hilarious as that sounds, it's a little bit sad too, because that machine was part of so many projects. So let's take a moment to say thank you for your service, old friend. I salute you. You will be missed. Now, when it came time to replace it, I took a chance on the 2023 MacBook Air 15 inch M2. And I know what you're thinking, a MacBook Air for video editing? Why didn't you pick the brand new M3 MacBook Pro? I totally hear you. And for some people, it's like showing up on a motorcycle race on a scooter. But stick with me, there's a kind of method to this madness and I'll explain. But first of all, let's go back in time a couple of hours to this morning when this bad boy arrived and unbox this real quick. The tech world is a little bit funny right now. You might have noticed that camera technology is hitting a bit of a plateau at the moment. Sometimes I feel that you almost need a microscope to see the changes. Now let's look at the mirrorless camera space in comparison. When the Canon R5 was released about three years ago, I thought that was a pretty big deal. But the camera models that came after were not really leaps and bounds ahead of what we've seen before. Now let's contrast that with the laptop scene. When Apple rolled out the M1 silicon chips about like two years ago, it was like they fired the starting gun on a whole new race. We are at this unique point in time where a less expensive machine like the MacBook Air can handle massive file sizes, even from cameras that are notorious for being like data hogs. So even if you want to edit in 4K ProRes and 8K RAW video, yeah, the Air can manage that just like a champ. Now, before I tell you my opinion about the price tag and how future-proof this bad boy is, let's talk about something that complements any great editing setup. That is Artlist who made today's video possible. You know, it's really easy to get caught up in the gear game, thinking the latest camera or computer will kind of like instantly magically make your videos more compelling. But here's the real deal. Fancy gear is not gonna make you a better storyteller. What truly elevates your videos is having the right editing assets and of course the right soundtrack. And that is where Artlist comes in. 
their extensive library of music and sound effects gives you the creative freedom to tell your story the way you envision it. And the best part, it's all royalty free, meaning you can use any track, anytime, anywhere without worrying about copyright issues, which is a must have on YouTube nowadays. Now, in contrast to other similar platforms, Artlist has become incredibly budget friendly. Their creative plan kicks off at just $9.99, making it a go-to for social media content. Need something for client work? They got a solution too. The professional plan is a steal at around like 17 bucks, providing even more flexibility. But wait, there's more. You can upgrade your plan to Artlist Max, which is priced around $39 a month. And that isn't just music, it's a full-on creative suite. We're talking stock footage, editing templates, sound effects, and a whole lot more. So if you are serious about stepping up your video editing game, do yourself a favor, check out Artlist. There is a link in the description. And by signing up through that one, you will get an extra two months free on top of an annual subscription. All right, back to the topic at hand. Let's talk about the elephant in the room which is the price tag. Apple has just announced the MacBook Pro with the M3 chip and people are buzzing. But is it really a quantum leap or is it just like a rebranding scheme? Now let's check out the Apple website and quickly compare the prices. Here's what a fully specced 14 inch MacBook Pro M3 offers. 20 gigabyte of unified memory, two terabyte SSD and all those bells and whistles. And this will set you back around $2,600. So let's contrast this with my fully specced 15 inch MacBook Air, which boasts an M2 chip, 24 gigabyte of unified memory, two terabyte SSD storage, and a slightly larger 15.3 inch liquid retina display. All of this comes for two and a half thousand US dollars, which is about a hundred bucks cheaper. But this machine is also a bit thinner and more portable, which is nice. So you gotta ask yourself, is the MacBook Pro really worth the extra cash? In my opinion, it isn't if you compare it to the 14 inch version. But if you are craving a real performance boost, then you're looking at the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So a similar configuration with 36 gigabyte memory would cost you at least 3,900 US dollars. Yeah, I have to admit it is faster, but do I really need that much more horsepower? especially if I'm not even planning to upgrade my camera anytime soon. So if you are going for the high-end model, like upgrading to the M3 Max chip with up to 128 gigabyte memory, that is gonna cost you like 5,400 US dollars. And yeah, it's going to be significantly faster, but that's also more than double the price tag, which is crazy, right? So to pro or not to pro? That's the million dollar, or should I say, thousand dollar question right here. Is the extra performance you get from a MacBook Pro M3 worth the higher price tag? Maybe, but it really depends on your specific needs. So if you are someone who is constantly upgrading your camera gear, yeah, maybe it's worth investing in a higher end model. But realistically, if you already own a high end camera, what is the point? Unless you're shooting on a cinema camera in 8K or some kind of ridiculous resolution, you probably won't even need the performance. But if you are like me, who shoots video for social media predominantly in 4K and you're not planning on a camera upgrade anytime soon, then why pay more for power you don't really need? I got the Canon R5, which is known for very large file sizes, and the MacBook Air handles it well enough. So stay smart and let me know in the comments, are you team Air or team Pro? Now, last but not least, let's talk about how future-proof a MacBook Air is. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking, sure, the MacBook Air is cool, but wouldn't a MacBook Pro be more future-proof? Look, I think there's some truth to that. So if you would max out a MacBook Pro M3 today, it's likely gonna remain a workhorse for a good number of years, definitely. But here's how I see it. Technology recently is moving so quickly that future-proofing might not even make sense anymore. So for me personally, I would rather save a thousand bucks today and invest it in newer technology three years from now. Because who knows what kind of quantum leaps we'll see by then. 
So instead of buying the most expensive machine now, I opted in for something more cost effective, knowing I can upgrade when the next big thing comes around. In my opinion, the MacBook Air 15 inch is like the underdog that packs a punch way above its weight class and the flexibility of upgrading in the future without breaking the bank today. That's the kind of forward thinking I can get myself behind. So if you enjoy this change of perspective, do me a favor, hit that like button and maybe share it with someone who's interested in the new Apple computers and might want to upgrade. I got some more videos lined up that you don't want to miss. So I'll catch you guys on the next one.